Okay, here we have a script file I set up to do our spring mask damper. I'm giving it a mass here in kilograms, a damping coefficient, a spring constant. I can calculate the values for omega, zeta, and the gain if we want to put it the transfer function in that form. I'm using the transfer function command here uh, with a numerator and a denominator to create a transfer function, and we will display that in the MATLAB command window. I'll determine where the poles are. I'll do a Bode plot. I'll plot the pole locations, and then I'll do the step response. So we'll have all that um, to kind of compare as we change damping. How does the time response change? Where do the poles show up? And what is the what does the Bode plot look like? So going over to my MATLAB window, omega n is 0.7746. That won't change if all I change is my damping. Zeta is 1.5, so it's greater than one. I'm expecting real poles. Um, my gain is 0.33. That's a function of that spring constant. Here's my system transfer function. If I do that all right, um, f squared plus 2.4s, that's zeta omega n, and 0.6 is zeta omega n squared. And my poles are at minus 2.1 and 0.28, minus 0.28. So if I look at my poles in figure two, you can see I've got one pole here, and I've got another pole over here. This pole closest to the origin is going to dominate the transfer, or dominate the time response. And since they're so far apart, I, ex I expect my step response to almost look like a first order, um, first order response with, uh, with this pole at, uh, where, where is it? 0.28. So that's pretty slow. And my step response, 1 over 0.28, uh, well, whatever, I should have done the math. Um, you can see the time constant, 60%. It's about five seconds, just kind of guess balling it. Um, there's my Bode diagram. Uh, if we were to do a um, insert line, let me just draw this while we're at it. So I put some lines in here to kind of match this up. That's about about there. And insert line. Start down here and try to get it as straight as I can along there. And they crisscross at about, uh, this is 10, uh, about 5 hertz. We said about, uh, that seems about right, or 5 radians per second, I'm sorry. So that's, that's about where our poles are. But you can see there's no peak, there's nothing like that. Um, I can go into my script file, change the damping coefficient, we'll go to 9. Oops, wrong button, 9. Run this. And going here, we see that our zeta is now 1.16. Our poles have moved a bit, 0.44 is the slowest one, and if I go to figure two, it's moved from there over to here, and on the other side, poles moved from out there to there. That's my dominant pole. Step response, it's a little bit faster. It's this upper line here. And um, I should have made the gain equal one, that we could pick up 63% point. Oh, well. And you can see it doesn't look much different in the Bode diagram. Going back here, let's randomly pick a value here. Oh, I don't know, let's call it about 7.746. That seems like a random number, right? Sure. I just pulled that out of the air, if you believe that. Um, that gives us a damping coefficient exactly equal to 1. So at this point, our two poles should have come together on the real axis, and as the damping gets reduced, um, you know, they'll spread apart. So there's where our two poles are now. They're just right on top of each other. Uh, what a lucky guess, right? <laughs>
And the Bode diagram doesn't look a lot better. The step response is now moved up. Um, delete. Let's move it up to this line up here. And it's, it's getting faster, but there's no overshoot. There's nothing. It's, it's two first order poles, so you don't expect any overshoot. You don't expect any oscillations. Uh, going back here, 0.75. I'm going to do a couple, just, just run them without going through all the details. Just to fill in our pictures. 0 0.7, 7.5, I'm sorry. Okay, and I'm going to do one more, uh, another random number here, 5.48. I just happen to pick, and it just happens to be a 0 0.707 on the zeta, okay? So point seven, zeta 0 0.707, you guys may remember 0 0.707 is equal to sine and cosine of 45 degrees, and if our axes were equal, that point would be on that 45 degree line from the origin, and you can see that as I made that damping smaller and smaller, these points moved away from the real axis. I have this complex conjugate pair here of things. And if we go to here, see we're seeing, we're seeing some overshoot here now at 0.707. Can I move? No. I got to... I can just do this, yeah. Delete that one. So that's this top line up here. We're seeing some overshoot. And it doesn't really, is it, it, it just, it's right on the edge of oscillation. But in the end, and it, it comes out. And you can see that um, as the time response got faster and faster as, as we went from here, you know, to here, to here, um, delete, delete, and it's hard to delete, is that that pole moved away from the uh, origin. It's a little bit harder to see here on this, but as we come around back towards that origin, these, uh, if we look at our pole pattern, they're going to trace the semicircle all the way back to the origin, and as we get closer to the origin, that the real part gets smaller, the response gets slower, and it's going to take longer for these oscillations to die out. So let me throw up just a couple more points here just to kind of fill in our diagram. Um, two, four. Well, let's take a look, see what this does. Now with at four, see we got a good, we got a good overshoot here. And it comes down. You can see an oscillation where it undershot, and it's it's really not going away completely until about there. And that's this point on our imaginary S plane. I guess I didn't explain that in the beginning, did I? The x axis is the real axis. Y axis is the imaginary axis. I'll put a note in the video. Um, so we're kind of plotting things on the imaginary S plane. And we can see there's, there's still no peak in the Bode diagram. If I go to, where am I at now? Damping is four. Uh, so it, it, let me let me erase these here because they're not helping. Yeah, they're covering everything up. There, you're starting, there is a peak there. I was gonna say there should be a peak because that at the 5.48, we hit our damping ratio one. There's just a little bit of a peak here. See if I can't zoom in on it. You, you can see it's above that dotted line, okay? That black one, the top one's above the dotted line. Uh, four, I did four. Let's do two. Now we're seeing a real obvious peak. We're seeing a lot of us, uh, over here in the Bode plot, we see a real obvious peak. Right, right up here. In our step response, we're seeing a big oscillation. It's not going, you know, it's, it's not going away till it gets all the way out here. And we can see in our 
our root locus that 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 um, moving close to the origin, which is slowing it down, and our angle obviously is is increasing. So as that angle increases, we get more overshoot. It slows down. It oscillates for a lot longer. So let me slow it down to one. I'll just put. I'll just run these. One. Run. And. 0.5 run and in our Bode diagram I was actually going off the top here there's so much overshoot the angle down here in the phase has gotten steeper we're getting real close to our origin again so these poles are slow they're going to hang on for a long time you can see how long this oscillation takes to die out it's big okay so that so you can see how the location of the pole, as it gets close to the origin, it slows down. It takes a long time for that pole to go away. Poles far away from the origin are fast. Whatever effects they have goes away quickly. Um, as we increase that angle beyond 45, we see oscillations. And let's, let's uh, completely destroy our plots, make a damping of zero, run it. And now you can see on my step response, it just oscillates for forever, okay, because there is no damping. It, once you kick it, it just keeps oscillating. And over here in the Bode diagram, you really can't see the peak. Um, I wonder if I can make it. And it doesn't want to. Doesn't want to show that. Okay, but it's 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 there's a huge peak there. And if I were to go negative, oh, what have we got to lose, right? Uh, minus 0 0.1. So now we've got poles that are slightly negative, or positive, I'm sorry. The real part of the pole is positive. And once we cross over into the right hand of that S-plane, you can see it goes unstable. Uh, you can only see it at the ends of this. But you can see the scale here on the step response goes to 3 times 10 to the 25th. It's just exploding, you know. And you can also see funny things happening in our phase because now the phase starts out, instead of starting out at zero, it starts out at minus 360 and then goes to minus 180. So you can see where the system has just gone unstable. And that's, that's our time response.